Hey, welcome back to the tutorial. If you've been following along, you should have a dragon that jumps up and down when we click like this, some stumps that go by, and another dragon that we can hit that kills our player. This is cool, and we're gonna extend it out quite a bit more, but before we start adding extra functionality and make this harder, I wanna make it a little bit more interesting, and we're gonna do that with sound effects. Luckily, adding sound in a Unity game is extremely easy. We just need to find the sound effects that we want. Now, when I'm looking for new sound effects, especially for a little project like this, one place I love to go is opengameart.org. It's a great place for just lots of free art and sound and music and just about anything else that you could use in your game as an asset. So to find art or sound effects, we go to browse and I'll just pick sound effects. So they have 2D, 3D concept, all kinds of stuff. Then in the browse section with sound effects, filtered, which you see there's a little checkbox there. In fact, if we look right there, you see the checkbox. I'm just going to start typing and I'll find a jump. You can see that was actually a recent search of mine. Then we can look at the different options here and hit play on them. I, th I think I'm going to go with platformer jump. Some of these, by the way, are packs. So if we play like this, um, let's try jump sounds. You hear there's a little variety. And what happens is we can download these and it's actually a zip file full of different sound effects. Like I said though, I wanna go with platformer jumping sounds. So we're just gonna take this single one. Oh, actually look at this. It's actually a zip file as well. I think I want this one right here, this last one. So what I'll do is download this platformer jumping zip and I'll save this off into my documents or somewhere, wherever I want to save it to. I just need to open the file. I'm going to open it up. And now I'm in Windows, so it opened up in Explorer and I have documents and I have my platformer jumping zip. And this works great, so I can go in here and just listen to the sound effects. Just double click on them, play them. That's not the one I wanted, I think I wanted 10. Yeah, I want number 10. So I'm going to take number 10. And now this is important, so if I minimize the browser and I go back to Unity and I try to take jump number 10 and drop it in here. Notice that there's a little red, uh, or not red, it's a black cross marked off thing. We can't, it's not valid, that's what it's telling us. The reason for that is that we are inside a zip file. Now there are a couple ways to get around this. The first thing I could do is just take this, drop it onto my desktop, which is just below the screen, you can't see it, and then drag it up. Or I can go up to this documents folder and I can right click on it and hit extract all and just let it extract them into a folder. Then it's gonna show me the actual folder. We're no longer inside the zip and now I can take these files and I can drop them. Notice how the icon change. But I don't wanna drop them into my scripts folder and I think what I'll do instead is drop them right onto assets. So I'm gonna take jump 10 and drop it right onto the assets right there. Now if I click on it, you'll see that we have a jump 10 audio file here. Should look like the little orange squigglies there. And if I go down to the corner, there's a little almost hidden play button. I can play it and see what it sounds like. Pretty cool. So that's how we import sound. We just take an audio file. In this case, it's a WAV file. We can also use an MP3 or an OGG file, but I usually use a WAV or an MP3. In this case, it's just a little WAV. Just drop it right in there. So how do we hook this up? Let's think it through for just a second. We have a jump sound, we have a player, the player jumps. We probably wanna hook it up there. So let's go to the blue dragon, which is our player. And our jump script right here is I think where we're gonna hook this up. So we'll just double click and we'll add some code right here in our jump. So let's look at this. At line eight, we have our update method, again called once per frame. And we check to see if they've pressed the fire one button. Again, this is left click which we've been doing a lot of, or left control or the A button on like an Xbox controller. Or I think it's X on a PlayStation controller. So we're checking to see if they press that and then we're doing the next line here, line 11, we're adding force. But we wanna do more than one thing. We don't wanna just add force, we wanna also play a sound. So what I'm gonna do is add a new line here at the end of 10, so just go to the end of 10, enter to add a new line, and then I'll use the curly braces, which is shift in just to the right of P. And I don't want that ending brace right there, so I'm gonna cut it with delete, just hit delete to remove it. I'll go down to the end of line 12, hit enter again, and add the ending brace. So now we are still doing exactly the same thing. In fact, there's zero functional difference here. It's just that now we have the option to put more lines of code after this jump force adding thing. 
and run those all when the fire is pressed. Otherwise, it wouldn't work. So, in fact, here, I'll show you what that looks like in just a moment. So, let's see what we need to do to play some sound. Well, we want to get a component. We're going to say get component, and this is a special component called an audio source. So, we just type it in just like we did for the rigid body, and then open close parentheses again to actually do the getting, and then we'll just call play. And if I hit enter right here, it should automatically fix that casing and do open close parentheses and a semicolon. So this is going to get the audio source and tell it to play its sound. So I'll save that off. And if we go back into Unity and I hit play and I start jumping, let's see what happens. Give it just a second to compile. Here we go. And I jump and I don't hear any sound or anything. But I also want to note that, look down here, there's an error. There is no audio source attached to the Blue Dragon game object, but it's trying to access it, access it. So if I click on it, it'll actually open up the console window, and I can double click on it to go to the code if I want. It's saying that we're not finding an audio source, and we're calling play on something that we're not finding, which is an error. It's like saying, hey, thing that doesn't exist, go do a thing that you can't do. Doesn't make a lot of sense. So what, what do we need to do? We need to add an audio source to this game object. So I'm going to stop playing. And we'll go select our blue dragon, which is our player again. And then we'll add a component called an audio source. So I'm just going to start typing A-U-D-I-O. And if I scroll down, oh, you can't even see it. So let's collapse these. I hit the little arrow here to collapse. The arrow to collapse. And we'll start typing. There we go. We've got audio source. We'll just add that. And now if I hit play, let's see, it should give us no error, but we're not hearing any sound yet. That's because we haven't actually assigned our audio clip. Notice this audio clip field right here. So what I'm going to do is go to the project view. I'll go back to my assets folder and I'm going to take this jump tin, drag it, don't release, and just drop it right onto the audio clip. Now if I hit play, let's see. Oh, I still don't hear anything. Why is that? Right here. You see this little checkbox? It doesn't look like a checkbox, but it actually is. It's a toggle. This mute audio option. So if your game view has mute audio on, you're not going to hear anything. So if you did all this and it didn't work, go check for this. Find your game view. Make sure that it's big enough. Notice how when I have it over here, you can't even see mute audio is there. Make sure it's big enough that you can see it and then hit play. And then let's listen again one more time. Oh, we can hear it every time. But watch again when I hit play. Let's listen right at the beginning. I haven't clicked. And we heard the sound right away. The reason for that is this play on awake option. This is really useful for things that we want to play as soon as the game object becomes available or gets instantiated. In this case, though, we don't. We only want to play this when they jump. So let's turn that off. Hit play one more time. It should start without the sound effect. And then... There we go, we get the jump. Now again, if you're playing and it starts to get irritating because you're just hearing the noise too much, just hit mute audio. You can still bounce back and forth and leave your game code all hooked up so that we still have audio. It's just not turned on. And we can hit it again to turn it back on. Pretty cool, but before we wrap up audio, I wanna show how to add in some music as well. So let's go back to open game art. Open that page back up. And if we go to browse and choose music, we see a whole bunch of music options. You can start typing and filtering in here or just pick something. I'm just gonna find one that I like. But after playing a bunch of them, I think I'm gonna go with this little platformer one. So I'll click on it and it gives me a bunch of options because this is actually a pack and I'm just gonna download this intro theme which was the one I liked, save that off and I can even take it right from here in Chrome watch this, and drag it into my project. And now I've got my music imported. So now we have music in here and a jump sound. So let's hook this music up. To do that, we're gonna create an empty game object. Just go to game object, create empty. And I like to name these things. So I'm gonna name it music. And a lot of the time for these, I'll just put little square brackets around it too. These are the letters around P. These don't mean anything. They're just there for me to know that this is kind of a special object that 
is different. There's only going to be one of it, and I'm using it a little bit differently than other things. So I've got this music object. I'm going to right-click on the transform and just reset it. It doesn't really matter where the thing is because we're not doing positional sound, but I like to have them all zeroed out and just reset so that there's no extra data in there. And then we'll go to Add Component, and we're going to add an audio source again. And now we're going to assign that intro theme. But this time we want to leave Play on Awake checked. We don't want to turn that off because we want our music to play right when we start. So let's hit play and check it out. There we go. We jump, jump, and oh, we died. Cool. Hopefully you're getting the idea here. We can start adding in sounds pretty much anywhere we need. We just need to have an audio source to play those sounds, and then we call play on that audio source to make it play once. And again, remember the play on awake option here? We'll make it play from the beginning. So we do that for our music, and then it just plays automatically. But for our jump, we turn that off. Again, if you like this stuff, don't forget to share it with all your friends. They're definitely going to want to see it, right, guys? Um, and uh, don't forget to like and all that fun stuff. And thanks again for watching. Hope this is really helpful.